Want to learn how to leverage a new webhook feature in Cisco DNA Center for pandemic planning? Stay tuned as Kareem will show us how to implement this into custom solutions. Hey, Snackers, Matt Napoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with the Cisco DevNet program. And this is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. And welcome to episode 11 of DevNet Snack Minutes. For those of you who are just joining us for the first time, uh, Snack Minutes is your 10-minute weekly all things Cisco DevNet, where we talk about coding, APIs, and just some cool stuff that you might want to know about. And the cool thing that we're going to be talking about today, or Kareem is actually going to be talking about today, is a cool proximity app uh, that leverages Cisco DNA Center and a new feature that's just been added. So Kareem, I'm going to turn it over to you to kind of give us a rundown of the solution and uh, and show us some cool stuff today. All right, thanks, Matt. So as we are going through this pandemic and we're talking to our customers and partners about this, uh, what we're realizing is a lot of our partners and customers are planning for the return to the office. And what would be cooler than utilizing your current uh, network infrastructure as a sensor for pandemic and uh, proximity tracing? And this is exactly what um, the DNA Center team has done is they build out a new feature in DNA Center that in Cisco DNA Center that allows you to essentially uh, call a webhook to receive a payload from uh, your access points uh, and your client proximity that essentially what they do is they basically ingest all of that data, aggregate it, and give you a clean, simple payload that you can essentially build out a report for your HR, for your pandemic uh, response team uh, in preparation for all of that. And what I've done is I basically integrated that feature into chat ops and I leveraged the current WebEx team's bots in order to do so. And so it's been it's been a really fun project and it's uh, very useful when we go back and I'd like to walk you through what is essentially happening here. Okay, cool. So um, just so I'm clear here, we are tracking um, people's mobile phones or their laptops to find out where they may have been over, over a period of time and then tying into that data set through this webhook. Am I, am I correct in that? That's exactly right. You're uh, spot on. Spot on. And, and DNAC is handling that for us. We don't actually have to worry about any of that. All we have to do is call that endpoint and, and job's done, right? So here's the overall architecture. There are three pieces of information that we need to know and kind of a housekeeping um, perspective. When you're talking to a bot, you have to register a messaging webhook. When you're interacting with the, with the adaptive card UI, you have to register an attachment webhook. And the third piece from a DNAC perspective, when you're asking for the proximity data, you have to register uh, a webhook to basically an endpoint to receive that payload whenever you trigger yeah. whenever you trigger that event. Okay, so I took all the the three the three together, and uh, I leverage the current infrastructure in AWS, leveraging API Gateway with a Lambda function basically as my endpoint and my Python to process. And then we preach about this, so might as well you know drink our own tea. I leveraged Vault for for tokens for all of the authentication that happens back and forth. Okay, that's cool. That I, I hadn't heard drink your own tea before. Uh, that's a new uh, a new metaphor for that. So that's cool. But yeah, I, if you guys remember, we did that that Vault episode. So I'm glad you implemented that as well, Kareem. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that said, I'd like to walk us through essentially. How you know quickly what what's happening here before we drill into the demo? And I learned actually a lot through that process. So first two pieces is the the two lambda functions that we have, right? We have a bot lambda function, and it's basically uh, receiving the messaging payload, parsing that. And what's cool about this too is then saved me a lot of time. Is I actually use the WebEx Teams uh, SDK Python SDK to make all of my API, API calls. It saved me a lot of time and. Uh, and we 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 covered a whole bunch of sessions around that, Matt, with uh, in Snack Minute how useful SDKs are. So I basically go through that, parse the data, uh, parse the conversation. I look for keywords from our from the user, basically for help or search. If the user talks to my bot that way, then I know they're asking to look for something. Otherwise, I just send them a witty message saying, "Hey, I don't know what you're talking about." Right. 
Um, so that's that's the first lambda function. Okay. And the second part is that I'm looking at is the second function where now that I've basically served the card UI um, and this the card UI, if you look and you dig into the, 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 the documentation, it's nothing more than a piece of JSON that you post as a message uh, via you know, the APIs and it gets rendered as adaptive card into the WebEx Teams client. So this is the form that they're filling out to kind of register someone to say, I know that they, this particular person might have been exposed or tested positive, and so I want to track them. Is, the, is that what's going to happen here? Spot on. And, and the three pieces okay. of information that we require is the, the client name, so a username, whatever you identify your clients that are registered on your DNAC, uh, on your mm -hmm. infrastructure in general, not necessarily DNAC, uh, and the, how, how long, how long do, you wanna, do you want your report to be going back 14 days, 10 days, 5 days? and okay. the proximity of that client, right? So we want that client to, to, we want a report based on the client being within proximity within five minutes, 10 minutes, or 15 minutes. And that gets rendered via, via DNAC and serves up the payload and you do you build a report with it. And so the second piece actually does exactly that. The second Lambda function is after the user presses submit, it basically renders the, the, the attachment webhook that gets received from from WebEx Teams, and it goes out and goes to DNA Center, basically says, hey, go and fire off an event that I'm registered to so I can receive that proximity information. And it dynamically builds uh, a, a really neat report. And this is essentially what I've learned. Um, there's this cool library called a Wheezy Print. And what it does is it allows you to dynamically build HTML from within Python spits it out as an HTML file, and then you can take that HTML file, make it into a PDF, and push it as an attachment out into um, messaging in, as part of the message in Teams. It's beautiful. That's really nice. That's really cool. OK. Um, I'm always looking for solutions to format my, my result sets, and this sounds cool. <laughs> Yeah, and it's pretty straightforward. I mean, they provide you also some sample CSS that you can call uh, and make your report look pretty. So with that said, I'd like to actually show you, Matt. I've already added this bot to our room, and uh, this bot is uh, called Pandemia, and I'm just going to say hi. The bot is going to ignore it because I don't know, you know, hope, uh, sorry, I need to actually get the bot's attention. So by actually tagging that bot, so it doesn't know, now it's telling me, hey, you need to tell me help, which is the two keyword, one of the two key keywords that I'm looking for. And uh, the bot is going to come up and say, okay, welcome pandemic team. You have access to me. You can give me help or search and I'll spit out this. This is the form that we, the adaptive card form, right? So we're looking for username, number, and number, and 15 minutes. Um, and how, how long? And then and we can add some notes. Uh, but this is basically what was rendered from that JSON I was showing you. If I click generate report, and and just because I'm using a test instance of DNAC, I I already know that this user is uh, it has data within my as a client, so I have it hard coded to make it easy. But this could be anything, right? So I click gen generate report, and the magic happens in AWS where it goes out, it receives this, and it basically goes out and renders that HTML that we showed you that we walked through. And I get this nifty report that I can actually zoom in and show you. And basically, this is we have test data in that, and this is basically the client information. So right now, based on Kevin and M, within the past, you know, this date, 05 of January to 19th, and all of this data is coming back from DNA Center. Uh, the exposure is 14 days, 15 minutes. These are uh, our team essentially that's you know it's been exposed. And it also tells me how long they've been, the exposure time, how long they've been proximity within that pandemic positive employee, and it gives me information on location. So I could actually take this a little bit further and generate a report around uh, essentially the buildings that I've visited or that pandemic positive employee has visited. And, the, and I can you know go sanitize or undo what's needed. Kareem, this was really cool. Thank you for showing us this. Um, is is this something that's going to be available on uh, on DevNet Automation Exchange? 
Definitely. So the code that I went through uh, with you, including the the rendering of the the report, as well as the building out of the, you know, the web hooks and all of that in AWS, will, is available on Automation Exchange. You can go out and check it out and get the code and look at the the write up around that. Oh, very cool, very cool. Oh, I'll definitely go out to to DevNet Automation Exchange check this out. Um, and then for all of you that are, are from, or that want to learn how to use the uh, Cisco DNA Center APIs, um, head to uh, our developer center at developer.cisco.com. Check out uh, the APIs, uh, the documentation, the learning labs that will get you up to speed on how to leverage the solution and or build your own solution like this. Um, that's about all the time we have for today. So thank you, Snackers, for joining us this week. And catch us next week for our next episode.